In this video, I'm going to show you how to do web scraping with Python using Beautiful Soup. And specifically, we're going to be scraping this website to get a list of all the countries that participate in the Olympics and put them into a CSV file. I'm going to assume that you already have Python installed. If not, I have videos for Mac and Windows. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial. I'm going to open up a terminal window here on my Mac. If you're on Windows, you're going to use the command prompt. And I'm going to check my Python version here, which is Python 3.11. Now, I, I recommend that you set up a Python virtual environment. I'm going to do that in this tutorial. Optional, but I do recommend it. So to do that, we're going to do Python 3-mvenv. And then we're going to make a new virtual environment in my home directory. And it's going to be called bs for beautiful soup. So we'll do that. And then we can activate that virtual environment by doing source env bs bin activate. Oops, activate. Okay, now we can check our Python version in our Python virtual environment with Python v, and we are running 3.11 as we expect it. So the first package that we're going to use is called requests. So we're going to install that with the pip package manager with pip install requests. And this pairs well with beautiful soup. You'll see what I mean as we go through this tutorial. So we're going to open up a Python shell by simply typing Python. And we're going to do a basic HTML request using the requests library. So let's import that package, import requests. And what we're going to do is define a variable called URL, which is going to be in the background here, the variable or the URL for olympics.com, which lists out all of the countries that participate in the Olympics. So let's go ahead and define that variable. And now what we're going to do is use the request library to pull that data down into Python. So how do we do that? We're going to do r equals requests dot get URL. And when we try that, nothing's actually going to happen. It's going to hang here for a while and eventually time out. So I'm gonna get out of that. The reason that's happening is because we never specified a header to associate with our request. And when olympics.com sees that request come without a header, they're like, I'm not gonna give anything back to them. So let's define a header. And I have this over here that I'm just gonna copy and paste rather than typing it. It's this dictionary that contains a user agent. Um, and this is the value of the user agent right here. So that's just saying, saying we're not Python. We're actually a Windows 64-bit computer uh, running Firefox or something like that. So we'll specify that in our request now. So the next time we're going to make the request, it's going to be the URL equals URL variable and the headers equals our headers variable. So we'll do that again. And now we actually return from that function call and we have this response object, which is, or, or, or had, yeah, it doesn't have an error code. It has a status code of 200, which is good, which means we got a proper response. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's print the response content. So we can do that by wrapping our dot content in a print statement. And that prints out a whole bunch of HTML code that is really hard to understand. And that's where beautiful soup comes into the picture. It is a parser that parses HTML. So let's go ahead and install that. We're gonna get out of here with exit and use the pip package manager to install beautiful soup, which is under the BS4 package. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, now that beautiful soup is installed, as you can see with a pip list, we have beautiful soup 4 installed version 4.11.2. Let's go back into our Python shell and pretty much do what we just did. So we're gonna import the requests library and then we're gonna define our URL as the same URL as before. We're gonna define our headers, which is this dictionary right here. And then we're gonna make our request using the requests library. So that works. Now let's import um, or let's, yeah, let's import from BS4 import beautiful soup. And what we're going to do, we're going to define a beautiful soup object and we're passing in the response content into that. So the beautiful soup object is going to be just assigned to a variable called soup. So this is what soup looks like. It's pretty messy to be honest, but if we want to print that out in nice formatted HTML, we can wrap it in a print statement and call soup.printify. 
and that looks much better. It's still really hard for a human to read through, and that's where we can parse out the HTML to a specific section that we want to pull out. So let's do that next. Okay, so let's actually go to our website. It'll be a lot easier if we do that. So let's minimize this. And what we can do if you're using Google Chrome is go to View, Developer, Developer Tools, and this will allow us to inspect the page and kind of uh, reverse engineer it <clears throat> to tell Beautiful Soup what we want to look for in the page. So they, if you're in the, um, I think any one of these tabs actually, you can click on this icon right here. It says select an element in the page to inspect it. So I'm gonna click on that. And what I'm interested in is this whole section here. I want to kind of like loop over every country that's in here and get the, um, the data associated with each one. So if I click on that, that's gonna select the this div right here so let's let's just dive into here and see what we're working with here so we have this outermost section uh, called capital r country and then inside it looks like each one is an a uh, a link element a href uh, for afghanistan albania algeria and so on and so forth so what we can do is start over back over in beautiful soup and get the entire section that are associated with all of these countries. So I think a good one to parse out is this section right here. And I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So let's open up the terminal window again. And we have our soup object still. So inside of here, we can kind of dive into the HTML. So we'll do soup.find. We wanna find the section, okay? This is a section element. And what section do we want? Well, we want the section that has attributes that are equal to data overview country. So the, the, the attribute is called data overview and the value of data overview is our country. Okay, so just to review, we're finding the element in the response object that is a section element and the attributes for that section element are data overview and it has a value of our country. So let's see if that works. Oops, we forgot to close that. And it does spit something out, still a lot to parse through, but it looks like we got it because the last element here is Zimbabwe. And I bet if we go down to the bottom of this page, we'll see Zimbabwe at the very end of the list. So there, oh, there it is. Um, so that did what we wanted it to do. Now, how do we get the individual countries in here? So let's minimize this real quick and take a look at those individual elements. So we have, um, we'll go back up to the top actually, because that's where the loop is gonna start. So the first element here is Afghanistan. And as we saw earlier, all of these are link elements or A elements. So that's a clue that um, we're gonna tell Beautiful Soup that we want all the link elements within this section. Okay, and what, we can do something similar. What are the attributes here? So one of the attributes is data overview box with an E. And again, we have that R country value. So each one of them has that. So that looks like a valid way that we can pull out all of those link elements. So let's tell Beautiful Soup to do that. So this time, instead of uh, what we did before, we asked in the soup response object to find the section that matches our query. This time, let's assign that to a variable called section. And then, whoops, I forgot to close it again. And then in the section, S-E-C-T-I-O-N, we wanna find, this time find all A elements with attributes that are equal to up here, we want the data overview box, data overview box with an E, and the value of the data overview box is going to be, again, our country. And this time I'll remember to close that parentheses, and I'm actually gonna assign this to a variable right away, and I'm gonna call this countries. So let's assign that to countries. Let's see what countries looks like. So countries, it does look like it's ending in a list. Let's see how long countries is. It has 206 elements. So let's see, 
back here on the page if they say how many countries. Yep, there are 206 uh, National Olympic Committee countries. So it looks like it did what we wanted it to do. Um, let's dive into there and see what we got. So let's look at the first country, C-O-U-N-T-R-I-E-S, the first element. Um, yep, it's returning Afghanistan. And now you can see uh, we can index into this element with href because back over here this has an href attribute and that's pulling out the link to the Afghanistan page which is this right here and we can also do something similar for uh, if we expand this over here this link has a div and an image so we can pull that out as well with something very similar we can do uh, get the first country of the list and then get the image associated with that and that pulls out that image element and part of that has an attribute called data source so we can index into that with data source and that pulls out just the string to the image which is matching up with this one over here and we can get the actual country name by doing something again very similar so in here there is a span element so let's find that and there's our span element that uh, has this attribute and then the text is just Afghanistan so let's get the span element and then from that we just want the text associated with the span element so we can do dot text so there's our data we have our country name we have a link to the image which is this one and we have a link to the country page, which is this one right here. So let's loop over all of those elements and print them out to the console. So we can do that with something like this. So for each country in our countries list, we'll get the name, which is country.span.text, as we just saw. We'll get the link, which is country href, and we'll get the image which is country.image and the data source. And then finally, we'll print that, the name with a comma, the link separated by a comma, and then the image. So we're just separating each country out, name, link, image with a comma. So let's see what that does. And it's pretty messy, but if we make this bigger, we can see it kind of take place. So Zimbabwe, that's the name of the country, comma, here's the link to the URL, comma, and here's the link to the image. Go all the way to the top. We should see Afghanistan at the very top. We see Afghanistan, link to the page, link to the image. Now, the problem here is that the link to the image does contain a comma, so if we would try to open this up or paste it into like a, a spreadsheet or something, it'll get kind of messed up. So what we can simply do is do the same type of loop that we did, but just quote everything a little bit better. So I have that over here. It's going to look very similar what we're doing, but instead of just printing the name, comma, link, comma, image, we can surround each element with double quotes like this. And we'll do that. It does the same type of loop. What we're going to do just to prove this works is copy all of this data onto my clipboard and I'm going to open up um, numbers here on the Mac and in here I'm going to make a new document, a blank document, and I'm just going to paste that data in here to see how it looks. And it looks like it did a pretty good job. So this first column is our country names, the second column is the link to the URL for the country page, and the third column is the image and that goes all the way from Afghanistan down to Zimbabwe, 207 rows, which the first row we probably skipped. Yep, so 206 countries, looks like it got all of them. Now, this was great for scraping uh, data from a website and putting it into a CSV file, but if we wanted to get images doing the same type of thing, scraping it from a website, check out this video next.